Oh, uh, the thing that I love the most about doing this with you uh, is fuck. the music. <laughs> I love the music. <laughs> I, I, you love all the music? I Can love the me? music. Can I you love the, the, the uh, interactions. I love uh, it, your, your camera that is it, one frame every quarter of a second. Fuck if I um, know. And but you know what? What? What do you what do you love most? What's the most? Can you I hear love me? seeing you? you I, love- I love I love being on a podcast with my my buddy. Oh, How that's you doing? Good. I'm good. And 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 hello to everyone out there who's been very patient because holy fucking shit balls, what a fucking annoyance. Uh, uh, yeah. Also, never move. Uh, I have moved. <laughs> I moved in a week and had to reset everything. So something's. at this going you know what we don't know what's happening we have no idea but i'm hoping that sometime soon uh dion will uh probably fire up the uh, technical difficulty slide um because we're gonna have to bring that music um yeah yeah um i'm gonna have to tell dion which is harder than it looks, to be honest. Um, and we've got people on the chat telling. <laughs> I love that I get to watch Dion do a little dance, but uh, no, we're going to have to to go. Wait, wait for the slide. I'm just going to type that in so that Dion. So maybe, maybe we're back now. I don't know. I've frozen. Yeah, yeah, you have. Um, yeah, you um, have. But that's okay. Um, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, just, we'll, we'll, we'll just see what's um, happening. People tell um, me if you can see me. Like, yeah. I mean, well, not even yeah. see me. Can you hear me? I mean, that's it. I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, yes. And the stream can hear us as well. So well done. So well done. I mean, at the moment, I mean, at the moment good chance there's a pretty good chance that, you know, I'm going to be looking at a weird version of you. And there's echoes. And there's echoes. Cool. Awesome. This is this is just the best, isn't it? I'm isn't super it? excited I'm super about, excited this. about um, this. Um, and also very glad that Peter really glad is, that Peter uh, listening, is in uh, Peter, listening in. Hi, Peter. Um, who can um, give us feedback give directly, us feedback on, our, directly uh, on our internal uh, chat? Uh, internal is chat just going, is just going. No. no. 
yes. <laughs> it's just kind of like, okay, can you still hear me now? Is there's everyone out there? Oh my god, there's six of them. Yes, <laughs> it's absolutely yes. protesting. Um, uh, let me know. Oh god, jeez. Only I was echoing. I don't uh, know why I'm who echoing. Knows? Um, <laughs> We'd like to talk about raised by wolves, but can we? We don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, there goes go go. So that's good. Echoes out. Oh, good. Who knows? Who knows what's <laughs> going on. Yeah. Oh, God. You know the best part about this? Some poor fucker's going to have to edit this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone is, Quinny. Um, that'll be me, yeah. won't it? What are we doing? Yeah. Do you want to start this show again? Hello and welcome to the Periodic Table of Awesome. I hope that you can hear me now, but God knows if you can. Um, uh, don't talk be... about God. Don't bring God into this. <laughs> don't bring we God are an into entirely this. atheistic show, um, and I will shoot you onto a planet full of children uh, to prove a point. A, excellent. A planet full of children. Well, there's, it's only got four children on it, but that's full, technically. <laughs> Soul knows. Yes. Yes. Soul will know this shit. Yes, oh. yes. Soul, Soul sees everything. Soul is fully aware of what's going on, and he saw what you did last night and what you did last summer. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Quinny. Yes. Uh, who are you? Uh, I am the robotic Dion. I am Max Headroom <laughs> of Dion's, uh, where I just kind of, everyone just crops frames, and you get to see me in my most gloriousness. Uh, yes but hey the audio is functioning and this is an audio format we're not really video at the moment well we're no trying, i'm just going. gonna have to be twice as animated now just to try yeah. and make up for you so my arms are just going to be going every which way um, so my me. apologies i can hear you people can hear us this is good everything's fine everything's fine now yes we're, we're all fine we're how all are you fine here now how are you yeah, I do love it. As as uh, Bran also points out in the chat, of course the trailer is playing perfectly yeah. down the bottom, <laughs> so that's great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. problem. That all ran completely fine. Yes, it is. It is a wacky, flailing computer. Oh man. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so today, yes, it is a bit of a sausage fest. It is Dan and I, um, uh, who are returning to doing a podcast together by ourselves, sure. but with all of you, which is very exciting. Yes. Um, it's nice to have all y'all here. Yeah. And also, like it's been a, like there's a there's a sort of a thing that's been going on recently, uh, which is like there's been a lot of things going on, and I've been playing catch up. I realize how much we've missed, and it sort of seems a little weird because it's like, what are we doing this week? Are we doing Raised by Wolves? It's like great, and then people are like, I haven't watched it, and I'm like, yeah, I didn't watch it either, and then it's like, oh shit, and then we think, what else are we supposed to be doing? Oh yeah, there's New Mutants and Tenant. Oh, we haven't seen that. Great. Okay, yeah. so... Anyone want to go to the movies? No, no not really. I don't want to go. I might get COVID. Yeah. <laughs> we could also be doing uh, Mulan, but quite frankly, there's a lot of politics with that, so I think we might just leave that one well the well, fuck alone. I thought, yes, I thought you'd uh, have a nice time watching the uh, screen rant. No, not the screen, the, the movie script guy, whatever his name is. Oh, was. so you've got a movie for me? Yeah, yes, exactly. I do. <laughs> yes, yes, that one's out today, so you can go and watch that straight up. I watched it, and it's very <laughs> funny, and now I probably don't need to watch Mulan, so I feel pretty good right. about that. We'll be short and sweet. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> yes, we'll be short and sweet with this one, because uh, not because it's bad or anything, I just... Um, uh, yeah, I just think that <laughs> it's um, it's a tech shit fight. Yeah, and, this is uh, a tech shit fight, and I am I am dying, and Quinny's dying, and everyone's quietly paddling underneath, going. It's absolutely. Fine. It may look calm on top, but underneath, Dion's legs are going. Yeah, Prrr. trying to get the the internet working. Anyway, uh, yes, who, um, who, who knew that the internet was a paddle boat? Yes. Um, anyway, but we are talking about Raised by Wolves, which is the new series by. By Ridley Scott, but no, um, from directed. the mind of Ridley Scott, I don't know what you'd say. No, it was created by Aaron um, Gazakowski and not Ridley Scott, but Ridley Scott directed two episodes of them and he is an executive producer. So Ridley's hands are all over this um, uh, pretty interesting show. And I've got to say, mm. um, I was excited to hear that Ridley was doing a bit of space TV and hoping that it would be good yeah i know what um, you mean i mean see my my thing with it is i like ridley scott um when he did alien and alien well when he did alien and yeah. i like some of his ideas that he did for prometheus and, and i liked him when he did the martian and i like you know a lot of his really weird creepy stuff yeah like but the martian you know you kind of hit this and you're like, oh, is it going to be more of Prometheus or is it going to be more a Covenant? Yeah, and then it turns out it's kind of more Promethe Covenant. <laughs> Prometheanant. 
<laughs> Marsh, Martian alien, um, yes. Kingdom of Heavenation. The Covenous. <laughs> yes, it's know. Cavernous. It's um, Cavernous. A cavernous Covenous. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, this one also kind of crept up a little bit um, uh, on me because I didn't see, like, I didn't really get too much of where this was coming from because it was in production. And then it comes out on HBO Max, which is a new kind of channel and on Foxtel in Australia. Mm. Um but it, what is it? Is the uh, should I do a synopsis? Is that oh, be, you can do a synopsis. Do you have one? I sure, have one. But, probably. You know. I mean, I'll look. I mean, do you want me to do it or you do it? Choose one. Um, look, you you go. You it'll your it'll level of involvement. If I, if I end up staying here, right? <laughs> okay. Ready? Good. Let's see what you come up with the first synopsis, and let's see what happens. Raised by wolves, centers around two androids, father and mother tasked with raising human children on Kepler 22b after the Earth was destroyed by a great war. As the burgeoning colony of humans threatens to be torn apart by religious differences, the androids learn that controlling the beliefs of humans is a treacherous and difficult task. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's an interesting one. Um, I, sure. I think that's... Is that the direction you want to go? Uh, look, I think it's it's vaguely where it is, but um, I mean, when you kind of talk about the 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 whole sort of series, yes, it is about belief and it's about um, you know raising children. But hmm. then there's sort of this whole other plot, which is about um, you know a gigantic uh, spaceship full of crazy Christian folks. Oh yeah. Oh look, it's science versus religion. I wonder who's going to like give us some information about. Oh, hello, Ridley. Yes, Ridley has has given us another show about science and religion. Well, this is the thing. I mean, you've only got to look back and at uh, what was the um, Alien Covenant? No, sorry, yeah. Alien Prometheus. Sorry, I had to think which one it was. <laughs> Prometheus um, Covenant. Yeah, Pr- Prometheus <laughs> Covenant and Alien. Anyway, the first one of those uh, stories, which was so much you know layered with religious um, iconography and stuff like that, that it was like. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We get it, Ridley. We 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 get that you're very interested in doing uh, science meets religion and what happens if God is an alien and so on. Sure. Like, but uh, the, this, t- I mean, feels <sighs> okay. So a, a long time ago, there was talk about a third Alien film that this is after Aliens. Um, and there was one that was going to be set entirely on a wooden planet that was all about um, a religious order in, coming into contact with the aliens. Isn't that just a rehash of the original script for Alien 3? Well, it was one of the many scripts for Alien 3. There, right. were, there were, like, so many people had a shot at scripts for Alien 3, and one of them was much more heavily based around religion. Right. Um, and I kind of... I almost feel like this is kind of a, a jumping-off point for this series... Right, you know, it's it's sort of it's hey, here's here's uh, androids and here's alien beings and here's a dangerous planet. Oh, and here's also a bunch of religion and let's see how they interact with each other. Yeah, right. So it's yeah. interesting. So, okay, look, I mean, and if you're going to watch this, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of a, a, a heads up. Don't watch it in the order that I watched it, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is not the way yes. to do it. Don't, don't watch it in the Dion cut order, which is like uh, watch all of episode two and then get halfway through episode three and go, hang on a minute. I think mm. I've missed something. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've, I've, the I've, entire setup of the plot, but that's I've, okay. I've, mi- I've missed me my playlist. I've got them around the wrong way. Uh-oh. Better go back and watch the first <laughs> one. Um, which yes. is good. And the, the Firefly Fox order, as, as Rob Franklin puts yes. it. <laughs> Yes, Play episode exactly. two, then episode one, yeah. halfway through the season, <laughs> jump around a bit yeah, because, yeah. you know, fuck narrative. Yeah, because I am in Australia, so I was just getting used to what I used to have to watch on TV. Yeah, I know. How did I do that? Uh, Magic. Uh, yeah, just not watching my playlist. That's what I, that's what I did. And, I, was, mm-hmm. and you know, I thought for a moment there, I was like, oh, I can really get on board with this because, you know, episode two starts with like a war scene. 
And oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah, okay. Just jumping you straight in there. You can get in there like, and, and pick it up as you go along. And then after a while, I was like, that was a confusing first episode. They're missing a fair bit, but maybe they'll do it in flashbacks, which they seem to be doing. And <laughs> then it like was not in flashbacks. Um, but Oops. anyway, yes. I've seen um, five episodes at, mm. uh, as, of, as of now. Yeah, um, I, I too am, am up to episode five. Uh, four and five came out uh, a couple of days ago, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and how are you going? How are you, how are you struggling? Are you finding it hard? Like, I mean, this this one's given me a touch of the seas. Um, the, the, the seas? <laughs> yeah, the Jason Momoa, the seas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, <Shit. laughs> yeah. It's a little bit like oh, I don't know. You know, it's kind of a bit, bit shit. But you know, whatever. I don't know when when I first started watching it, and like there were only three episodes, and I was kind of like, oh, maybe that's it. Maybe maybe that's all there is of yeah. of this show. I was kind of like, oh, okay. Well, that's that's a really interesting premise and a good short form story. And then when I got to the end of episode five, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is ongoing, right? Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm not entirely sure where we're going with this, but righto. Yeah. And now after episode five, I'm kind of like, I do, I will probably keep watching because I'm interested enough to kind of know where it is going. Um, yeah. But it doesn't do an awful lot to try and bring you in and make you feel welcome. No, and I th- but I think I kind of like that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this whole like uh sort of space stuff like i like space <laughs> stuff yes. um and we i don't particularly like i mean i like the idea of prometheus and all of the design and what it looks like and the feeling and it's just a terrible script and idiot choices by characters yeah and then you know i wanted to like alien covenant but i was just kind of blown away with how dumb it was um, mm. Also, tiny alien, like at the end, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah, and mm. it's like way, yeah, way to ruin stuff. Um, yeah, but in this one, I'm I I kind of w- watched the first few, and I'm like, I I I didn't like it, and now it's sort of growing on me, and I'm kind mm. of starting to like Mother. Yeah, which is a strange thing, but I'm but I also say in my defense, I'm watching the boys to, as well. And that oh, has shit. a whole bunch of mother issues that are very different. <laughs> but uh, oh my god! <laughs> but it's got a little confused. And I had—I'm uh, not going to lie—I had a weird dream last night, and it wasn't fun. <laughs> and it was. Was, was it about some some person in a in a latex suit screaming at you, and then your head exploding or something? Uh, no, just a weird. Anyway, no one wants to hear my dreams. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure the chat would love to hear about it, wouldn't you, chat? And now we wait for 30 seconds for the chat to catch up with our conversation. Yeah, um, no, and- someone says, was it about mother's milk? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not, but mothers were involved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now they do. Of course um, you do. Anyway, back to, um, to, to, yes. back to this one. Do you know who I like the most out of all of this? Uh, father. This whole show? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I knew you were going to like father. Uh, I, like, I like dad. He's good. <laughs> He's yeah. an idiot, but I kind of dig him. I like him like, I like him like I like Crichton. <laughs> oh, um, I would you like to hear a joke? Oh, yes. uh, uh, mother, I have uh, <laughs> performed my programming. Are you not happy? Yeah, <laughs> he, he does have a lot of that vibe going on, doesn't he? I do, but I'm also kind of annoyed by the fact that um, uh, what a like what a waste of programming that you yeah. can make a service droid who's useless in that shell. And then a fucking god tier destructo bot in that other <laughs> shell, and I go, how are they not? What like what are they doing? Yeah, and and I do find that a really an unusual kind of balance of those those two characters. That yeah, you mother. So to to the people who ha- have only watched the trailer or whatever, mother is. Um, a protector who has been set up to protect these children and help them breed because essentially they're wanting to start a new uh, colony of uh, humans that have been uh, brought up completely atheistically. Um, and father is the male android who is assisting her mother. However, used to be a war bot, a, as they call it, a ne- necromancer um, who is capable of incredible powerful destruction 
and is creepy as fuck when they, like when you first see her in episode whatever it was you watched two right so when you yeah. see them as a, a part of the war yeah. it's like holy shit those things are fucking terrifying yeah um yeah and and like i think it's is it in episode 1 or 2 that uh, she crashes the ship hey crashes which ship the the um colonist ship oh no that's a, like in uh episode 2 right i think yeah yeah and and like there's the moment where she is just going into the the uh religious the soul arc and just is terror yeah like <laughs> You know, she's something that that would feel very, very much at home in an alien movie. Yeah, and look, this is kind of the whole thing. I mean, um, what's the thing? The Earth is is freaking eating itself as it sort of seems to be doing at the moment. It's on ecological and and war collapse. So, that, you know, what have all the humans done? Decided to get get off the fucking planet. Um, well, get off the fucking planet, but also like as as per usual, split into their two uh, into warring religious tribes. <laughs> yes, yeah, which is what the militant atheists and mm. the uh, religious order known as the Mithraic, who you know. Well, I kind of got the feeling that they were two assault. different religions. There's the Mithraic and another religion. I could be wrong on that. Oh well, who knows? It's going to be you know. We'll find out. I, I, I'll see what we go. But it's just these these two ones. It's like either you're an atheist or you're a believer. And if you're a believer, you believe in the one religion. Uh, mm. And if you're uh, not an, uh, a, a religious person, you're an atheist who believes in science. Mm. So interesting. Yeah. Though, though religious people apparently still believe in enough science that they're quite happy to wander around and have um, oh, sure. androids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, the religious people believe in enough science so that they have better weapons. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's kind of weird. I won't even go into that kind of... Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, they, they, so she is sort of set up as being this, this super protective um, thing that is, is basically just there to try and raise children... <laughs> And apparently is not very good at it because within, what, the first episode, most of them are dead? Yeah. I mean, look, this wasn't her fault, as we find out later. And, I mean, this is the stuff that maybe I should have watched the first episode first. But we got to the bit where she's actually gestating, not directly, but sort of processing um, the, uh, the, the baby's nutrient feeds. Like, she's basically becoming a, a baby-growing factory, like, you know, mm. the, the life support system for, for babies, um, which is lovely. You know, it's kind of like this nice little thing that they're setting up, and then it just goes bad because um, robots shouldn't really uh, raise children. But then again, humans shouldn't really raise children, and that's what this whole series is about. It's like, who's best for the children here? Do you want yeah. some crazy religious nuts who are also terrible or do you want some robots who do things that are sort of terrible because that's what their programming is? Yeah, and and these things, I mean, thematically, it's, it's Ridley Scott and his people having an absolute fucking field day just going, okay, this is about, you know, parental things and it's what makes a good parent and what makes a good protector and absolutely nature versus nurture. And and also the value of religion in a person's life. What does it help people believe? Mm. Um, and does it keep people safe? Does it, uh, you know, um, actually endanger people mm. if you do believe in something or don't believe in something? Um, so the other main characters that we run into are Travis Fimmel and his hair. Oh, um, what the fuck is going on with future mullets? <laughs> I don't know. Um I don't mind Travis. He's an interesting dude. Um, and yeah, as Missy said, what are the names of those people? I don't know. It's Travis Fimmel and his hair. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. But yeah, they they uh, they are uh, stowaways who have taken the faces of a couple of yeah. uh, Mithraic soldiers. Yes, um, uh, they're Marcus and Sue. Thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> Cameron and Rachel, I want to say yeah. Gary. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. But also they have two different names. Yes. Um, uh, because they originally started out as being two different people who then changed their faces to be the, the mulleted ones. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, it's, it's, okay, Pretty King is saying that Cameron and Rachel pre-face swap, so thank you. Right, yeah. I mean, mm. look, and this is the sort of thing I think uh, people are sort of saying that in the um, the chat as well, is that the Mithraic religion seems to be anti-child raising, like absent from your children for mm. a certain amount of time. Yeah. And then this one seems to be, like the androids seem to be overly protective of the children. You know, it's all very weird. And I'm just not it quite, is. I'm just not quite sure I'm I'm I see this is the thing. Like I like it, but I don't like it. And then you've got, you know, just these different ideas that these androids are presenting. It's like it's all happiness and I'll tell you a you know bedtime story and shouldn't you just be happy having fun? And then, you know, oh but I'll walk around and like Sonic, I'll just absolutely Sonic fucking weapon. destroy people and, and make people explode. Yeah, I'll just Sonic weapon people to death. And also, am I going crazy because I'm breaking down and not, you know, I'm not, I'm not designed to be um, operating? And, and that's an interesting thing. By the time you get to episode four and five, there is some stuff about um, her mother's history yeah. that you realise that the reason that her programming is going so completely to shit is because this is not what she's meant to be. No. I mean, but you kind of get that idea anyway. The moment that yeah. she goes full um, uh, killer statue, yeah. you're like, oh, okay, right. So, uh, Well, I mean, she's a necromancer, right? Yeah. So this is yeah. definitely tied into um, Riddick. Because <laughs> oh. she looks like one of the, <laughs> She looks like the fucking dagger that he killed the necromunga, the necromungo. Ah. With. So there you go. That's what I say. This is definitely tying straight into the the future. And well, Kepler- I'm okay with that because this is also clearly tie- tying into the entire Alien universe. Because I'm, I'm sure that Kepler 22B is also mentioned in Riddick. So you know, I'm low key just saying that this is going to be the future. Yeah. Well, I mean, it 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 is an actual planet. Um, is it's known as the Kepler object of interest. Um, it's an extrasolar planet orbiting within the habitable zone of a sun-like star, um, says the man looking up on Wikipedia. Sure. But uh, you're allowed. Yeah. Um, uh, so have... yeah, the the whole. But I mean, it's clearly sort of meant to be evocative of the alien um, universe as well, because the androids seem to be basically the same as the androids from Alien. You know, there's the white blood, there's the weird sort of baubly things as their insides. Yeah. But Nothing. maybe this is alien a generation or two down the track. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, she has magical eyes that when she's got her killing eyes in, she real deadly. Yeah, yeah. It's like I can't activate without my eyes. Well, why the fuck not? Yeah. Like, I don't understand that as a whole, like, anti-killing mechanism? Why, why is that a thing? Anyway, I don't know. There's too many questions to ask about this. This fucking... Yeah. <sighs> Towards the end of the, the, the episodes that I've watched, mm. I started to get to this feeling, and it's a very uncomfortable feeling, and I, I like the way that the show makes me feel. I, make, I like that it makes me feel like mm. some of the, the creepiest bits of uh, Prometheus and stuff. Yeah. But I got a creepier feeling still which is it reminded me of lost yeah a little i bit. started to have a feeling of like oh you're just throwing all these things at the wall and seeing what sticks yeah it's kind of like it, well, i don't really know about that i mean i think it's got um uh, i don't know if it's it's sort of throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks they're not sort of reacting to how they put this this sort of show out but i mean they they kind of ruined it for themselves in the sense that they established a kind of fight between two places and now they're just establishing another series of events to get to another fight between the two people. And I'm Mm. kind of concerned that they they will run out of steam and whether or not, you know, will we get to see more about the planet and the Mm. creatures that are on there and, you know, will they find more survivors from that crash? Yeah. Um, mm. And how will humanity rebuild? Like, I mean, honestly, shouldn't they all just be fucking coming together? Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, if you've got a, a, a 
an android that has been programmed at their core to just not do religion at all and say, no, it's the, it's the biggest evil. And then you've got essentially the flying church brothers. Um, <laughs> the flying church of the spaghetti monster uh, mothership turns up and goes, here's your colander. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> and, and then they roll uh, up a big D... 20, I think it is. Um, actually, no, I think it's a D12. I can't remember what it is. But there's a big rock uh, D whatever it is at one point, yep. and I was like, are we playing weird D&D &D now? A hexagon. Is it real life? What's going on? What is all this? This is, this is But that's a, a thing from Soul. Like, I mean, yeah. Okay, it sounds like I really... It, I hate this, but I, I also want to talk about the good bits of it. Okay. Oh, I, I, I think that's well worth doing. And I guess another question we should probably ask is... Um, are we doing spoiler section or do, could, what can we spoil? I mean, nothing that we've already kind of talked about, I think. I mean, we can if you want. I do have a clip ready, which may or may not work because fuck, I don't know anymore. Because <laughs> uh, technology, whatever. I, just, I press um, buttons that say they're going to do things and you know what? Nothing happens. It's amazing. Cool. It's I reckon times. we should do that. Do, do we want to... Okay, do you think you could rate this? Um... I uh, I I consider it uh, a worthy experience, and I still think it's experiential. Like I I really think I wanted to watch this all in one sitting instead of periodically spaced out. Like oh. this is yeah, this is kind of one of those things. It's like a really long movie. You know, I want to sit down and 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 watch it. Uh, yeah. Much like uh, I when I when COVID you know, lockdown was happening at the start. I went back and watched season seven of Game of Thrones back to back and it's a lot fucking better. Is that the second last season or the last season? I think it's the last season or which, whichever it is. Like, you know, you watch the last season of it and you're like, oh, I get character motivations now because they didn't cut it up and make people go through an event television. Right, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, that may be a thing. Maybe this is a show that is more kind of one big long narrative that you know certainly i really enjoyed having the first three episodes you know straight up i was like okay cool yeah i've i've got an arc i've got a a, a storyline here yeah i mean i still don't understand how all of the technology works but i could get behind magic it, sort of yes magic it's all magic mm. how can yes. she do all this sort of stuff but then still be so hurt when you're like you're a crazy killing bitch get away from me anyway yeah <clears throat> Who knows? Explody people. Maybe in the future everybody's made out of red explosive dust. Yeah, look, I mean, I'll give it 75 if you force me into a corner. <laughs> if, if we had to back you into if a you, corner. If you, if you put me on a cattle ship and punch me off into the fucking netherworld where I've got to sit in a weird tube and have <laughs> virtual meetings with people and then another crazy subplot I don't want to go into just yet. <laughs> Good. I look forward to talking yes. about that one. Okay, so your rating is seventy-five. I am yeah. going to go eighty. Um, oh, fuck you for being contrarian. Just go seventy-five. I, <laughs> I well, uh, see, okay. No, I see. I find it really hard because there's parts about it that I really dig, and there's other parts about it that I'm like, oh god, I don't know what the fuck you are doing with that. Um, I, I feel like. What it's fascinating is is seeing something essentially that feels like it's got the budget of a big Ridley Scott horror, you know, movie, but being done stretched out over um, a series, and that I find really interesting. Um, it does. It doesn't feel like a TV thing. It feels like a movie split out over a very long time. Sure. Yeah. Um, but then there are other parts about it with, you know, the Mithraic people and stuff like that that does feel very televisual. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm um, fucked if I know. Um, <laughs> fucked if I know. 78. 70, 78, sure. Okay. <laughs> there fine. you go. Also, because when she's the necromancer, I think her head looks silly. Yes, it does look a bit silly. I, I get that. Well, I mean, like, look, here, can, can, watch watch a, uh, a, a clip. clip the, the clip maybe. is going, the, yes, no, the clip I hope, fingers fucking crossed, is the one of uh, android fighting on the planet. Um, so Ooh. enjoy the, the clip of android fighting and come back. Uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll do more spoilery stuff, but we'll, we'll try and answer the question, do androids dream of electric children? Or your mum. <laughs> or your mum.
Hmm. Well, okay, course. there was some typing, there was some clicking, but there was two androids beating the shit out of each other. Of course it didn't work. Fucking no. fine. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> it's just Very typing, exciting. Typing and clicking. Uh, clicking, I've got. Oh, dear. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I have a feeling that may have actually been your mic, but it doesn't matter because you've watched them, and on the podcast there'll be normal audio. Sure. You'll actually get to hear all of the android fighting and the screaming and the mother and the thing. And explain yes. to me now, what the fuck is that, or like, acoustic cannon? Which one? The mother's acoustic cannon. Oh, the screamy thing where yes. she screams and then... Um, I, d- I don't know. Um, like, I why find... wouldn't she just use bullets or something? <laughs> I, I mean, I kind of understand it, that if you're going to build a machine that can, you know, kill people, um, yeah. then you give it something that is, it can't be disarmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I mean, I get it too. It's, it's kind of an, an interesting MacGuffin that they're just like, okay, so if you can hear this thing, it's probably going to hurt you. And if you can see and hear it, it's probably going to vaporize you. Um, mm. Which yeah, is, you know. but yeah, why? Why the other the necromancers so completely OP? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Like because we obviously saw that there were other androids and uh, you know planes and troops and guns and other things like that. It's like how much money does it take to make a weapon like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, Ratbag Beetlebum says it's a resonant frequency sonic weapon, and cool. which. As I say, make makes sense because then you build the weapon into the android. But uh, sure, but doesn't the resonant frequency change? But depending on what the and maybe they found that every human has a corresponding resonant frequency that makes sense. yes. And also, it's I mean, it future. seems to be incredibly precise. Yeah, that it it's can the future, just just one or two at a time. Yeah, it, it'll hit the the monster that's attacking the small child, yes, but not the small not child. Actually, the small child either. But hey, you know that's what those magic eyes are for. Yeah, yeah. And there is something about that the whole thing of when the eyes are in, you can't look at her because she's deadly, but when she's, you know, yeah, I don't well, fully understand it. And I, think I mean, the, that's the interesting thing. Like, it's like, don't look at me. I think it's more of a don't look at me because I don't want you to see me as the monster that I could be. And I that someone else in the chat um, had said it a bit earlier. It's like, is this the first time where we're seeing actual android emotions represented from a Ridley Scott film? Usually androids have just been remorseless killing machines that um, don't give a fuck about humans. And in this one, they're kind of not, they're programmed to, to be the other way around, which I think is an mm. interesting point, you know. Um, and I hope that it goes better along the time um, uh, the, it, tr- it has that, that change between do we like mother or do we not like mother? Do we like father or is father not that great? Do mm. we think that the mullet brigade should be the ones running everything or are they just a bunch of filthy rapists? Well, one of the things that really shits... Well, and, and there is a <laughs> filthy rapist in there later on that you're like, okay, that's yes. really fucked up. Religion um, excuses everything. Yeah. Salt are going to do it. But the, something that did really kind of get on my goat a little bit was the the way that um, the kid seems to be quite comfortable with the idea of embracing a religion very quickly. Like, yeah. you have been raised from day dot as an atheist, yeah. and then a bunch of religious people show up, and you're like, yeah, maybe I'll give that a go. Yeah, well, you know, and this, is, this is not something that I think... I think that's quite... Um, common when you don't have something you want to experience something so i can kind of get that from the kid who's been raised the whole time say no you can't have this thing so the Mm. first time that the kid sees something like that he's like i want the thing yeah yeah okay um uh, yeah i i'm still finding campion's uh motivations quite impenetrable sometimes like occasionally i'm like oh yeah i get you know he's a kid he wants um, to not have things die and wants to protect things. But then there are other times I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, kid. You're making some weird choices and I don't get them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, hey, if all of his brothers and sisters had died and he was actually the runt of the litter who managed to take a breath after the mother put him to her breast, which wasn't a real breast, I don't know. Fuck, mm. fuck I don't know. I mean, I can't. <laughs> this show goes to great lengths to make you uncomfortable with the whole idea of uh, parenthood and procreation, and that's a kind of a good thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think that it's it's bad. It's just that I, think I don't think it's it, as important as it needs to be. I think it does a really good job of of making the concept of motherhood as alien as it kind of can be. 
um, you know, throughout the the whole Alien films, the the concept of of the alien is that it is kind of a weird parental thing where it, it, it grows inside your body and everything. This I feel is sort of thematically tapping on the same kind of eggshell, but um, uh, going at it in a very different way. And I really kind of like it, but at the same time, the first, the feeling I got when I watched the first Prometheus trailer, the sound, the music, the the attitude, is so much of what I get from this series. Like, and if you just extend it out over ten hours or twelve hours or however long, that's a weird feeling, and I kind of dig that. Yeah, yeah, look, um, kind of. Yeah, it's weird. I, I enjoy. I want to see the end of the season to see whether or not like they're gonna sort of come to a point where they both either both move on in a certain way because, yeah, you've got to admit now there are human religious survivors who have been infiltrated by atheism because who have now mm. been elevated to high positions in that religious society. Yeah. Um, and then you've got this other subset of people who you're following who are just trying to do good and, and keep humanity alive. Um, and teach children how to think for themselves. So there's mm. interesting kind of ideologies that's put in there. Um, but then, you know, we get to the end of episode five and there's also some kind of indication that maybe there is legitimately something supernatural about the planet. Yeah, and that's kind of weird too. And also the the, the idea of killing and, and uh, alien life and stuff there because there's obviously giant creatures that either used to live there or still do and yeah. are just very deep underground and may only come out you know, every now and again. And you've got those little humanoid creatures who have their own life cycle and yeah. what does it mean to kill? And it's all very biblical and, and kind of religious and, and lots of euphemism. Yeah, um, well, and that's very much one of the things, isn't it? Like, uh, the, it's about that symbolism, the, the visual storytelling of uh, what we think of as the religious, the Christian myth mythological cycle. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all about tilling from the earth and growing things. And so, funnily enough, even though they're the, the atheists, quite often the um, mother and father and those children are the most prototypically um, Adam and Eve-ish, yeah. Yeah. which is not by accident. No, of course not. Like, I mean, and I think everyone, um, like all the actors are doing a very great job at trying to do, like, uh, I hope, I hope for fucking, uh, for fuck's sake, someone has sat down with Amanda Collin and just gone, this is the basis of your character and then we're going to make it all weird. Um, so that people don't know. Um, well, so you're, you're hoping that she's just not just like that. Yeah, yeah, and I hope that this just isn't stuff they're making up as you go along. Like, yeah, that seems fine, depending on the director that's in there going, yeah, that seems like something she'd do. Or <laughs> yeah, 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 just sing a little bit. Okay, now now flail around and be kind of weird. Also, okay, cool. Do you know who I'm really disappointed in through all this is actually Travis Fimmel because he is playing the same fucking character that he played in Vikings. And I was just kind of like, oh, oh, he's just, he's just kind of playing Vikings again. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a bit boring. Come yeah, on, come on, Travis. Yeah, I like. I looked at him and went, I don't really know why you cast him. Um, he's he's fine, yeah. But there is nothing about his performance or anything that makes me go, oh yeah. That guy, yeah. he's, the, he's the one that we want to be, you know. And it's you know. such a shame that they've just picked this incredibly colourless, blank slate, um, kind of background colour palette that they're focusing on. Everything is washed out. Everything is trying to look alien by looking kind of futuristic and alien. But they've just removed all of the colour and interest from people. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. Well, it's funny. I'm looking at the trailer and, re and realising the trailer actually looks more colourful than the series. Yeah, it's like they put another fucking gradient wash on it and it's going like, oh, for fuck's sake, like this is yeah. how you do space again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that is frustrating because I think space can be, and, and you know, Ridley Scott's space can be colourful and fascinating and interesting. Yeah. But, yeah, it is really washed out and it feels oddly kind of, I don't know, disinteresting to me. Hmm, sure. I mean... <laughs> 
Um, I'm still trying to feel like there's a few bit of spoilery bits in there. I'm still trying to take away. Like, remember how they found out that those potatoey tuba things were actually radioactive? And yeah. When you like, once you pick them, they start breaking down and becoming radioactive. So when they were picking them to cook them and eat them, they're like and send them. That was a problem. All right. Mm. Uh, so sure, they found that out. That wasn't until after they fed it to all of those Mithraic people. Oh yeah, uh, that came there. And also, well, it, it's so strange that the Mithraic people found people on a a known empty planet and were like, "Okay, so what are you doing here?" Like, it's but of- then again, I mean, when we also find out that later on that they were not the first Mithraic people there. Um, so when did whether we, what when we find, what, what what sorry did I miss something? Yeah. How did I miss um, this? So in Spoiler episode... Spoiler me. F- yeah, we are in the spoiler section, but in episode four and five, um, there is a sequence where um, uh, what's an, a mother finds a pod from the sh- uh, from another Mithraic ship. Oh, I thought that that was, that was the, the other one. No, I don't think oh. so. I, so. It was not the impression I got because the person that was in that pod had been dead for a very long time. Oh, and okay. there's also another survivor on the on the actual planet. So, uh, yeah, um, well, we don't know about that survivor yet. See, mystery, yeah. mystery. Is that someone who's bred with one of the other? Or who knows? Like, what? I don't know. Is- Missy does make a really good point there that, um, in the chat that uh, you know food only grows where the giant serpents' death uh, were dead. So maybe the ground is only um, you know got stuff in it where there's been dead bodies in it. Yeah. Um, but also, does that then make them radioactive? Later on, there are some vegetables that they find that they're like, yeah, you could eat this. No, it'll probably kill you. Uh, like it's all... The thing... Sorry, you go. No, I was just I was just kind of like... I was really disappointed. Well, not disappointed. I thought it was kind of stupid that they crashed that Mithraic ship into the mountain range that's like right near mm. where they were. But then I realised, no, that's probably smart because they could investigate the wreckage. It's yeah. far enough away that they can't just get there easily, but it's um, also close enough that they know where it is. Yeah. So it's potentially yeah. smart for an android. Mm. <laughs> Bloody androids, stupid things. <laughs> it is such a strange, uh, like, uh, uh, tonally, it's a weird show. Yeah. Like, it's meditative, it's occasionally a horror, it sort of jumps from, um, you know, proper alien style jump scares to weird kind of psychological um, horror. Did, did you, it's very difficult to put a, th- a finger think, on. I'm actually curious to this too. Like I noticed in the first episode, there was like the, the ship that they mm-hmm. crashed in, the, the, the down ship at the start. I swear to God that that's the one that they used in the Firefly episode, like the shell, the ambulance episode where they <laughs> found it in a junkyard, which I swear to God is like a low rent eighties uh, helicopter shell from like a, a Russian, like a fake bodged <laughs> helicopter. Like I've seen is. it in about 23 different things and I'm like, motherfucker, that's got to be a recycled prop. Yeah, like I have to find the, the name of that prop and just be like, yes, this shell has been used in 473 film and television <laughs> productions over the last 20 years. Um, it's an interesting one. It's all shot in South Africa, um, which is a, a location that Ridley's apparently quite uh, fond of. And I think it works for as an alien planet. It, like, it, it, you really get the feeling that this is somewhere quite weird. It's strange that he's not going to Iceland or some other shit like that. Well, but then there are moments like you look at the the mountains and stuff like that, and I, I totally get a feeling of oh yeah, we're we're doing that Prometheus thing again of yeah. of shooting in Scotland or Iceland or wherever the fuck that was. Yeah. I, see, the thing is, I would not be even you know remotely surprised if they turned around and you know cross crested a hill and find a a, a civilization of the fucking what are they called the engineers. From Prometheus. Or they might run into a few of the other science fiction TV shows that have been shot in South Africa over the years. Absolutely. If they can find <laughs> Charlie Jade, I'll be really impressed. Oh, I've got to remember the other one that Jamie Bamber was in after Battlestar. Oh. I can't remember what it is. I'll look it up. Hang on a second. Yeah, yeah. While you're looking that up, yes, uh, Predator Kangi, you do make a good point. They really love their shot of the fog pouring over the mountaintops. Yes, they do. Absolutely. Um, yeah. This is. 
Um, and it wasn't the last of the entire human civilization that we're the escape pods. Um, I believe so, but once again, see, I'm still not entirely sure that it, whether it just came down to being the Mithraics and the atheists. I had a vague feeling that there was another group of a different religious group. Um, so that there are two different religious castes who are both in some kind of um, uh, argument with each other and then the atheists separate again. Because I kind of, I mean, once again, by the time you get to episode four and five, there is some stuff to do with uh, mother's origins that you kind of like, okay, well, is is atheism that common or is it only a very specific um group of people who believe that i don't i don't know um but yeah i I look it's it's complicated and and the reason that i keep that feeling of it being a bit like lost and and when i say lost i mean the the worst aspect of lost which is hey we're just going to keep making shit up and we don't have a plan for where it's going to go and maybe it's not all going to pay off and that scares the shit out of me about this because yeah. I don't want this to be one of those series that you kind of get to the end and go, well, that was dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is <laughs> as I said, I'm, I've got a touch of the seas. Mm. <laughs> See, the thing is, I, I couldn't even be fucked finishing C. I've still got two episodes and I don't <laughs> care enough to watch them. Whereas this one, I think I would probably need to finish off just to get some feeling of closure. Just to get some feel, a feeling of uh, okay closure. Well, okay. Fair yeah, enough. I think I would. I will. I will finish watching this series. Um, it's very interesting too. Like, I mean, I know that we've been talking Ridley, Ridley, Ridley Scott about all of this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's Ridley Scott directed the first two, and then his son directed the next two. So it's very much a Scott production. Like mm. there is a lot of Scott in this, um, and you know, while it was mainly written by Aaron uh, Guzikowski, there's some other ones. So there's not much, um, there's not much of a difference there. I think it's kind of like we set this up, you keep keep doing it, you know. You yeah. guys do it, do it um, this way. So uh, Luke Scott directed three episodes, Alex Gabassi two episodes, Sergio Sergio Mimica Gazan two episodes, uh, Ridley Scott two episodes, and James Hall one episode, and. Aaron Guzikowski, as you said, and Heather Belson is the other writer credited, but um, Aaron has apparently written all 10 episodes, which I think is a good thing. Yes. um, Because I'm a big fan of having one narrative uh, plan. Yeah. Yeah, it's better to have have some one showrunner, like, making sure that it all fucking happens. I'd be real worried if I looked at that and went, "Oh shit, there's 20 writers." That's the what that's the show thing. Outcasts. A bunch of humans stranded on a foreign planet. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, which, you know, is a, always a, a good uh, um, you know, uh, do you remember that third season of Battlestar Galactica where they were on like this prison camp on a shit world? Yes. It was yes, I do. It, it was just that with okay. with no Cylons. Right. Mm. Mm. I'm going to give a shout out to the cinematographers for the series, Ross Emery, Eric Messerschmidt and Darius Wolski. Um, They do some pretty cool looking stuff. It's like it is a good looking series. Yeah. That's, that's part of the reason that I will want to finish this off. I can't fault the fact that it looks amazing. It has a definitive style that is, you know, quite interesting and they've, they've spent a lot making it look like it works and making you be able to go along with all of the, crazy science fiction ideas that come inside it. It's just that the rest of it is the why is the thing that I'm missing at the moment. Mm. And and I think that is actually going to be a, a struggle because like, yeah, when, when you like, okay, well the robot can just fly and the, and yeah. the people are talking to an invisible God maybe. And you know, you kind of like, Oh, have we given ourselves too broad a canvas? You know, if if the robot can fly and and kill everybody, can it also do basically anything? Yeah. You know, what are the rules? Can it can it help you or not? We don't know. Mm. Yeah, but the rules yeah. seem to be always broken by mother. But I do like that father is also there to help keep the rules established. 
Yeah, and I, I think he's doing probably some of the hardest work in the series. Yeah. Um, Ababakar Salim is the actor, and he, yeah, in a lot of cases sort of has um, the the tough things of delivering jokes that aren't funny yeah. and balancing out a, a very, very mysterious presence in Mother. Yeah. And is, is the other question I think I want to ask, Quinny, do you think that this is, is a return to form of Ridley Scott or do you think it is, it is uh, another one of those, oh, well, Covenant was a bit of a shit. Prometheus <laughs> can go down as well. Um, I don't... Uh, look, I feel like it's a return to form, but I also feel like it's... I think Rob um, put a really good point uh, in, in the Facebook thing where it's like it's kind of a Ridley Scott greatest hits, yeah. you know, um, part one or part two, I'm not sure which, yeah. um, you know, you've got your, your androids, you've got your aliens, you've got your weird planets, you've got your big monsters, but you've also got your kingdom of heaven. You've got your bit of the Martian. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a, a lot of, it's just like, Hey, I'm going to do all the bits that I'm really good at. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Missy asked the question, who's in charge of writing the ticker? <laughs> yeah. This, this, were, this we week are. it was mainly, mainly Quinny, but that's us. We write it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Yeah. We've done it we every didn't week. know whether anyone ever read that shit. <laughs> yeah. We, we, write, we try and write jokes every week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes no one reads them. Thanks for reading them. Uh, reading well, them. Well, that's good. We appreciate yeah, that. We appreciate it's nice that. to know that people care. Thanks very much. Um, good for you for noticing. Hmm. Um uh, will you say? watch it all the way through? Uh, yes, I imagine yeah. so. Yeah, I will. I mean, I I want to. I mean, yeah, just fucking get rid of the mullets. It's the future. Yeah. Um, stop, uh, st- stop confusing me about whether or not people are having fucking, you know, uh, are they having experiences? Are they not having experiences? Um, you know, just, yeah. just work out how to survive on a, a potentially hostile planet and raise children. That's interesting enough. Yeah, agreed. Teach me. I, I, I feel any time that they get into this whole kind of, oh, are we are we living now? Are we not living now? Are we, yeah. you know. T- teach me more. Well, yeah, show me more about the children. I mean, this is the really interesting thing that I think that I overlooked a lot in this first season is they've been tasked with raising children on a planet and they've focused not on the children, really. Like, mm. are we... We, we don't actually get to understand why they're doing and how they're feeling about things. Yeah, uh, which surprises right. me because, yeah, like when you first see the, the trailers and stuff for it, it really does feel like the concept is going to be all about, you know, a couple of androids raising some kids um, and those kids learning how to survive and everything. And then, yeah, within the first, well, first episode, you know, half of them or more than half of them are dead and you're like, oh, Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> yes. Weird, weird flex, but okay. Mm. Yeah, look, you know. Interesting. I will watch the rest of the season. Not sure about it unless it goes somewhere really interesting if I'm going to come back and see season two. But hey, things can surprise you. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we are going to see some really interesting shit coming on uh, down the track with this. Yeah. Um, I just hope that they keep up the quality because it's the sort of thing I could very easily just go, oh, it's really expensive. Sure. And I'm just curious to see, as you, as with every uh, uh, TV or, or film series that has children in it, who's going to get a growth spurt? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in between seasons. <laughs> yeah. And suddenly we've got to go, oh, there's just a, a jump of time. Don't know uh, why. Everyone remembers Bran. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Bran. What a cute, cute whoa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just have him lie down for a season. Nobody yes. will notice. Yeah, sure, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yeah. All right, I think it's about enough uh, from us out there, unless anyone has any questions. But uh, could you tell me um, what? Are, what? what you oh, go. I was just re- reading Rag, ta- Rag Ratbag Beetlebum says, I like really Scott's world building broad strokes are fun. It's the detail work is best noticed. Prometheus has a Not commentary noticed, track no. with Lidri- Ridley, and it makes for a more enjoyable experience in the mo- movie <laughs> audio itself. <laughs> when yeah. he's just describing everything. Yeah, I'll see you on this. <laughs> That's my best Ridley Scott impersonation. In this scene, I actually used blue paint. <laughs> you need to ca- you need to paint cows blue, or they don't look like horses. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, actually, Missy says filmed in Cape Town. I think uh, when the kids went bush, could have sworn that was an Aussie landscape. Okay, little known fact about uh, um, both uh, South Africa and um, Australia. Well, um, in South Africa, gum trees are a pest. Uh, they they were introduced a um, hundred and something plus years ago, and they are now um, everywhere in South Africa because they happen to grow really well there. So they're a native Australian thing that is now a pest in South Africa. So, yes, it does look like the Australian bush. Yes, much like Australians in LA, just a pest. Yeah, they're everywhere. just a pest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry, Predikanga. Yeah, that did get a little bit educational. Whoa. My apologies. All right, well, <laughs> um, next week, Quinny, what, tell, tell us, what are we going to talk about next week? The boys, the boys. The boys, the boys. The boys. Dun, 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 dun. That's right. Um, it's Prodigy all the time. We're actually going to drop some beats. Yeah, uh, and I've got my soundboard ready, and we're gonna go. I'll have it back up and running. Fucking yeah, we'll be, maybe. Who fucking maybe. knows? We don't know. You might get some um, notifications between now and next Tuesday of uh, Periodic Table of Awesome Live. It's gone live on Twitch. I might just be trying to get shit working. Could yeah, just be me it's gonna be a good time in the room, going fuck. I don't know what's yeah. going on. Yes. So yes, we're gonna be the looking boys, at season two boys. of The Boys, uh, which is. Uh, very dark and very bloody. Interesting, actually. I've, I've, as I said, I've been watching both Raised by Wolves and The Boys at the same time. Not exactly at the same time, next to each other. Not that confusing, yeah. but it has made for some interesting viewing. I can tell. No doubt. Yes. Also, uh, um, coming up in about four minutes um, on this very stream, I'm going to host. PAX 3, uh, where if you are feeling so inclined, you are welcome to stick around and watch me do stupid voices of game development explained by sock puppets. Yes! <laughs> because why the fuck not? And if you're feeling uh, so inclined, go back and watch Quinny hosting The Great Debate. Um, oh, yes. Which, which he did uh, on Sunday, wasn't it? Sunday? Yeah, um, I went out on Thursday last week, but yes. Yeah. Um, Yes, so yeah, the Lenovo Great Debate, uh, there are three that are running this year, and they're all a part of PAX, because yes. PAX is happening right now all over the world yes. at different times. Uh, Quinny, how long have you been doing uh, sock, uh, Sorry, uh, game development as... Uh, explained by, explained sock, by sock, puppets. sock Puppets? This is the fifth year of it, so yes, um, but this is the first it. time that we've ever actually done it um, pro like properly. We normally do it on stage. <laughs> Um, we did every year properly, Quinny. <laughs> yeah, but about? you know, this is the one where we actually had to film it and plan what we were doing and stuff. And um, we were like, oh, we'll do that for PAX. And they're like, okay, cool. By the way, it has to be done like before you actually, it's got to be pre recorded. We're like, oh, fuck. So over the space of the last three weeks or four weeks, we've made a feature length film. Yes. Good times. Good times. Uh, we'll, yeah. Uh, excellent. Yes, please stick around. Go watch uh, and, and watch the um, the PAX uh, thread. I mean, stream. Yeah, we'll, we'll host it on this stream. But um, so basically, you just have to sit there. Should be yeah. fine. It, and it, and and it's also educational. So sorry to freak anyone out who's just. Yeah. I didn't want to learn sorry. nothing tonight. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, You've got some learning. more book learning to come. But it's all done with sock puppets and entertainment and good. And jokes. maybe there's music too. Oh, who knows? Fancy. Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, I, I don't know. may even stick around on the stream and chat through uh, the whole thing. So, Ooh. Um, you tease. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, um, I'm don't, I don't even know who I am anymore. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a weird half human that doesn't uh, make stuff go. But uh, I look forward to talking about the boys next week and fixing all of this, this shit that's gone wrong with the tech. But fine, whatever. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, Dion, you have been magnificent. Excellent. Um, that's is, is that a mother reference? No, I've got no joke. No, I've got no, no joke. I, I literally just, just mean you have been pushing shit uphill and doing an amazing job. So a round of applause Ooh, for Dion. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, th oh, thanks, everyone. I'll see you all later. Okay, bye. Say bye. Wave bye, Quiddy. I'm waving, bye. but no one can tell. I don't know. <laughs> I've this. got no idea. All right, we're out now. We're going. Bye. <laughs> Cheer them on so proud. Six-powered girl.